Hi again. To start off our literacy lesson today, we're going to look at three more common exception words, and we're going to see if we can learn how these words are spelt. Remember that common exception words don't follow the same rules as phonics for the whole word, so they can be a bit confusing to learn how to spell. That's why we practice them to see if we can learn them off by heart. So the three words we're going to look at today are these three words here. First word is a very tough word that people get spelled wrong for a very long time, and it's the word people. The letter E and the letter O are making the E sound in people. P e, P, L, people. Then we've got father and we've got mother. These are two people who may live with you or may look after you, the father and the mother. The reason why they are both common exception words is because the A in this word is making an R sound and the O in this word is making an A sound. So they're both not following the rules of phonics the way we would expect. So take a look at those words. We've got the word people, the word father, the word mother. I want to see if you can remember how to spell those words. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you some sentences to write and I want you to see if you can uh, spell those words in the sentence. There may be some other words in the sentence as well that you might struggle with too. They might be common exception words or they might be words with phonics that you do find difficult. But try your best and see if you can spell the words correctly. And then we'll check afterwards to see how you did. So I'm going to cover the screen. And let's have a go now at writing our first sentence. You may need to pause it uh, to give yourself a little bit of time to catch up and write the whole sentence. So sentence number one is... How many people live in your house? How many people live in your house? If you need more time, pause the video. We'll move on to the second sentence now. The second sentence has got two of those common exception words in. The sentence is, he shared the sweets with his mother and father. He shared the sweets with his mother and father. He shared the sweets with his mother and father. If you need extra time, pause the video and have a go at finishing that sentence. So now we need to check whether you first of all spelt those common exception words right, but second of all, whether you spelt the rest of the words in that sentence right and use the correct punctuation in the sentence. So let's go and check the sentences. I am going to write the sentences here and you're going to check whether you spelt them right. So the first one was how many people, so it's how many is a common exception word we have looked at before, M-A-N-Y, many people. Is already on the screen. Live l -i -v in y or your house. And what type of sentence is that? It's a question. So hopefully you remembered your question mark at the end. If not, go back and add it in. Let's look at our second sentence then. He sh air d shared the s w e t s sweets with his mother and father. And what type of sentence is that? It's a regular statement, so it needs a full stop at the end. So hopefully you got those sentences more or less correct. Hopefully you got the word people, the word mother and the word father correct. If it's something that you still find a bit challenging, maybe add it to a list which you can practice at home and go over in your own time to see if you can spell those words. OK, we're going to move on to the main part of today's lesson now. The main objective in today's lesson is to use a range of punctuation effectively. So to be successful, we're going to see if we can use capital letters and full stops accurately. We're going to see if we can use exclamation marks and question marks accurately. We're going to see if we can use commas and maybe apostrophes accurately. And then we're going to see if we can use a range of punctuation accurately. So once we've practiced each of those, have a go at seeing if we can use each of those. So for your starter in this main objective, I have written on the left hand side the six bits of punctuation which we have looked at in year two. And on the right hand side, I've got an explanation as to how each of those are used. 
I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can match up the punctuation on the left with the explanation of what it does on the right. And then we'll see if we can link them up together. Pause the video and have a look. Okay, let's check if you got them right. So I'm going to get my arrow tool here and we're going to link up one to the other. So let's get the green arrow. So a capital letter, and I'll give you an example here, capital letter. Now, why do we use a capital letter? We use it to show a sentence is starting. So we're gonna link these two together. There is another reason you might use a capital letter. In fact, there's two more reasons. You might use a capital letter for the name of someone, if it's a proper noun, or you might use it for the letter I by itself. A capital I, when it's just talking about me, because I am so important, needs to be a capital letter. The second one is a full stop, which looks a little bit like a dot sitting on the line. And the reason we use that is to end a regular statement sentence. So if you're just telling somebody something, just a fact, or just writing down a regular sentence, it needs to be a full stop at the end. The next one is exclamation mark. I would use an exclamation mark if I wanted to end a sentence in a more surprising or exciting way. So that is why we'd use an exclamation mark. Sometimes if a character in a story is shouting or excited, an exclamation mark might go at the end of that as well. Question mark. Why would I use the question mark? I just used one, didn't I, when I said that sentence? It's because I was asking you something. When you use a question mark, it asks something. So that gets joined to there. We then got comma and apostrophe. They both look the same, don't they? Except when they're written, a comma sits on the line and apostrophe floats up in the air. One of them is because it shows that a letter is missing in a contraction or to show belonging, show possession. And one of them is to write, sorry, to pause or to write a list. Which one is which? That's right. The comma is to pause or to write a list. And then the apostrophe you might use if you are showing that something belongs to something else. OK, so now that we've done that, we're going to see if we can put some punctuation in the correct sentences. So can you work out what punctuation is missing and let's add it in together. Can you believe I'm in, Me I'm in Mexico? Well, I can see something is missing at the very start, can you? Yeah, that's right. It needs to be a capital C, doesn't it? So let me put my mouse back on and let's change that to a capital letter C to start the sentence. Can you believe I'm in Mexico? I'm means I am. That means that a letter is missing and it's letter A in am. So there should be an apostrophe to show that the A in am, I am, is missing. But remember what I said, I am very important. And because I am very important, I need to have a capital. And of course, another thing that's very important is the name of the country, Mexico. That also needs a capital letter. Now let's read the sentence one more time to work out what should go at the end. Can you believe I'm in Mexico? It's a question, isn't it? I'm asking you, can you believe it? So a question mark needs to go at the end. Did you fix all of that the same as me? Okay, let's have a look at the next couple of sentences. And I'm gonna give you a bit of time, maybe pause the video to see if you can add in the correct punctuation, then I will fix it with you. Okay, hopefully you had enough time. If you need a bit more time, remember, pause that video. But if you are ready to move on, let's see if we can correct sentence two. Of course, we need to start our sentence with a capital T because it's the beginning of a sentence. The sand on the beach was golden, shiny, and very hot. That sounds to me a little bit like a list of what the beach was like. So if there's a list of things, golden, shiny, and very hot, there's three things there. I need thing number one, comma, thing number two, and thing number three. So I need to put a comma after the first adjective, which was golden. The sand on the beach was golden, shiny, and very hot. And to me, that just sounds like a regular fact sentence, a regular statement. So I think I'd put a full stop at the end. You might think that an exclamation mark could go on the end if you thought that was exciting, but I don't think it's very exciting. So I'm quite happy with the full stop. The last one. My brother James, of course, needs a capital M. James is his name, which means he needs a capital J. My brother James hopes the fun will never end. 
that sounds a bit more exciting than the last sentence, doesn't it? So instead of putting a full stop, I think that one might end with an exclamation mark. Happy with that? Did you agree with me? Okay, now for the main activity today, we're going to have a go at doing some slow writing. So we're going to write four sentences and you're gonna need a piece of paper and a pencil to be able to do that. Um, I'm going to have a go at writing my sentence and then you're gonna have a go at writing your sentence. Hopefully your sentences can be just as good as mine, if not better. So for the first challenge, we're going to see if we can write a sentence about our holiday in Mexico, and what it was like using capital letters and four stops accurately. So let me just make my screen, I have two things on there, there we go. And I'm floating here, so I'll move up out the way. In fact, I'll put myself in the middle there. Can you see me? Okay, so I am going to see if I can write a sentence about my holiday in Mexico using capital letters and four stops. So that just means it just needs to be a regular statement sentence. So I might say something like, I have been on holiday for the last week. I've got a capital letter at the start of my sentence. I've got a full stop at the end. It's just a regular statement. Can you write a regular statement sentence about what your holiday has been like or maybe something that you've done on the holiday? I'm gonna get rid of that off the screen. And see if you can write your own sentence. Okay, moving on to sentence number two. If you need a bit more time, remember, do pause that video. You don't have to keep going at the same speed as me. Um, you just have to go at your own pace. For the second sentence, it says we need to use an exclamation mark correctly. So an exclamation mark means that it's going to be something a bit more exciting or a bit more interesting. So maybe I can think of something that's happened to me on holiday that might be quite exciting to hear about. What can I think? I have an idea. That picture of Chichen Itza down there has inspired me. When I visited Chichen Itza, it was so big that I had my mouth wide open in shock. So you can tell the person something that's maybe a little bit more exciting or interesting, and you finish your sentence with an exclamation mark. Of course, you need to put a capital letter at the start. And I added an extra comma in there because that's where I'd pause in the sentence. Your turn now. I'd like to see if you can have a go at writing a sentence with an exclamation mark correctly. When you've finished it, unpause the video and have a go at the next sentence. Okay, let's have a go at sentence number three. So for sentence three, we need to use commas in a list correctly. Now, because I'm doing that, I have two choices. I can either write a list of places where I visited, or I could think about one thing I did and maybe describe it using a few adjectives that's, that come in a list. Remember, when you're writing a list, you need that word and, but if you're writing a list with more than three things, you'd also need a comma. If you've got one thing, it's not a list, it's just one thing. Two things in a list means one, and another one. Three things in a list means one comma one and something. So you've got one comma with three things. If you have four things in a list, one comma two comma three and four. So for four things, you'd have two commas and an and. And it goes on like that. However many things you've got in your list, you always have two less commas than that. So if I had a list with five things in, I would need one, two, three commas and an and, because five take away two would be three commas. I hope that makes a bit of sense. If, it's, if you're not sure, then just maybe have a practice of writing some lists with some different amounts in in your own time. So I'm going to do a list of things that I've been to see in Mexico. So I have been to visit, and I'm gonna think of either three or four things I've been to visit. So I have been to visit Chichen Itza, Tulum Beach, Copper Canyon, and Mexico City. If I wanted to add some extra detail, I could say Mexico City, which is the capital city. Oh, 
and full stop at the end. Not a slash, a full stop. You have a go now at seeing if you can write your own list sentence. Pause the video, have a go, and when you're ready, we can do the last sentence together. Okay, we're now ready for our last sentence. For our last sentence, we've got a bit of a challenge ahead of us. It says we need to use an apostrophe and a question mark correctly. So I need to ask something. Hmm. I need to ask something. So it needs a question mark at the end. And I need to use a contraction. A contraction. Or I could use sort of an apostrophe for possession. But I'm thinking maybe I could start my sentence with a word like can't or don't. Um, don't you want to visit Mexico too? I'm asking them something. Don't you want to visit Mexico too? So it's a question. And I've used the apostrophe in don't to mean do and not. With the letter O missing, you put the apostrophe there to show it's missing. If you're struggling to do the apostrophe, just use the question mark correctly. But if you really do want that challenge and want to impress me, I'd love to see a use of an apostrophe in your sentence as well. Your turn. And when you're finished, I want you to unpause the video. Okay. So have a look at my sentences and have a look at your sentences. Whose do you prefer? Hopefully you prefer your sentences. If you do, what do you like about them? What could you do next time to make your sentences even more exciting? Remember to upload your sentences onto DB Primary so I can see them. And then hopefully you can see if you can remember to use that punctuation correctly in all your other pieces of work as well.